When I realized I was pregnant, I realized I had to do something about it because I wasn't going to leave college. I wanted to be a writer. I've been writing since I was 15. I'm 81 years old. I was born in 1936. I've published 17 novels, 19 books of poetry, a memoir, a play, and four nonfiction books, and a book of short stories. I grew up in Center City, Detroit, in a predominantly black neighborhood at a time when anti-Semitism was rife in Detroit. I was raised basically by ghetto Jews. My mother was a housekeeper. She'd grown up in poverty. My life was nothing like the life that I saw on television, and I was trying to make sense of the discrepancies between life lived and as it was supposed to be. And I began writing both poetry and fiction. In my freshman year of college, I fell in love violently with someone who was most dangerous to me. That was where I first lost my virginity, was in his, in his old car in the back seat. He hated condoms. I insisted we use them, but he said, well, just, I'll just put them on when I'm about to come. In those days, contraception was illegal in many states, and it was certainly illegal for unmarried women. The attitude toward women was that we had no sexuality, and if we did, we were bad. It didn't occur to me I was pregnant, but my mother noticed that I didn't have my period. A number of my friends had gotten pregnant in high school, and I saw what happened to their lives. Often the man would leave. Uh, and you'd be there with a baby, and you had no education, and the jobs open to you were minimal. At that time, if you were affluent, you flew to Puerto Rico or Mexico, or your gynecologist might do it. But I was a poor kid from a work, working class neighborhood, and I didn't know any abortionists. I aborted myself by taking tweezers and pushing them into my womb, opening it and pushing inside. The pain was so intense, I passed out. I woke up on the floor in a pool of blood and the blood kept coming and coming and coming and I almost bled to death. The women's movement was in its heyday. We could summon thousands of women into the streets of cities to, to fight for abortion. We fought for it. We politicked for it. We lobbied for it. The other major story today is the decision of the United States Supreme Court. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. Specifically, the court today overturned laws in Texas and Georgia. The decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor, not the government. The Roe v. Wade decision did not come down from the Supreme Court. We agitated. I always think of my grandmother's life and my mother's life as opposed to mine, the choices that were available to us, how much more I could have than they had. As a result of my abortion, my opinion of myself went way up. I had been willing to almost die to take control of my life. I felt that I had learned how strong I was and I felt that the path was now clear for me to become the writer I wanted to be. 
which I would never have been able to do had I had a child at 18. I believe that Roe v. Wade, with the present judges on the Supreme Court, will probably be overturned. And if women don't take to the streets, they don't know what their lives can be like.